Hello and welcome back to the fifth episode on how to create your very own programming language. So in today's episode we're going to be adding in comparison operators, logical operators and booleans. So for the comparisons we are going to have equals, not equals, less than, greater than, less than or equals and greater than or equals. So the idea is that when we use one of those operators it will return either true or false. And instead of adding a boolean type to our language, we are just going to make the number 0 represent false and the number 1 represent true. For the logical operators, we are going to have AND and OR, and for AND it will only return true if both of the values are true, and for OR it will return true if either of the values are true. We are also going to add a NOT operation which will return true in the case of false and false in the case of true, so it will just invert uh, the boolean value. And finally we are going to add two built-in variables to the language and those will be true and false. So true will be equal to 1 and false will be equal to 0. So we'll begin by adding the new token types to the lexer. So we'll add some new constants for double equals, not equals, less than, greater than, less than or equals and finally greater than or equals. We are also going to add three new keywords to the language and those are going to be and or and not. So we'll generate these tokens inside the make tokens method of the lexer. So we'll start with the not equals token, so we'll check if the current character is an exclamation mark. What we'll do in a minute is create a new make not equals method. So we'll just call that and get the token and error. And if there is an error we can just return that error along with an empty list for the tokens. But otherwise we can append this token to our list. So the make not equals method is going to check if the next character after this character is an equals and if so create the not equals token. Uh, but otherwise it will return an error message. So the next tokens are single equals and double equals so we'll just move our single equals code that we've had before down to here. And in a minute we are going to move this code into a self dot make equals method. So this will make a single equals if there's only one equal character, but it will make a double equals token if there are two equal characters. So then we have to do the same thing for less than and greater than. So we'll change this to less than, and we'll make a less than token, and then we'll change this to greater than, and we'll make a greater than token. So this method will make a less than token or a less than or equals token, depending on whether there is an equals character after the less than symbol and the same thing applies for greater than. So we'll add in the make not equals method first. So like the other methods we currently have, we're going to have to grab the position start. So we know from where we call this method that the current character is an exclamation mark, so we can advance, and then we can check if the next character is an equals. So if self.current character is equal to equals, we'll advance again, and then we can return a new token with the token type of not equals and then we'll pass in the position start and position end and an error message of none. So if we don't come across an equals we're going to have to return the no token along with an error. So we'll add in this new error type in a minute called expected car error. We'll pass in our position start and position end of the error message and our error message is that we expected an equals after an exclamation mark. So now we will add in the make equals method. So we again need the position start. And from where we call this method, we know the current character is an equal, so we can just advance. And then we need to determine whether this is going to be a single equals token or a double equals token. So if the next character after the equals is yet another equals, we then know that the token type should be a double equals. So we'll go ahead and advance and we'll create this token type variable and we'll set that to double equals. And otherwise we'll just come up here and set the token type to single equals. So we can then return a new token, pass in that token type along with our position start and position end. So the next two methods, make less than and make greater than, are almost identical to make equals, so we'll just duplicate it twice. We'll change this first one to make less than and we want the token type to be less than, unless there is an equals afterwards, then we want less than or equals. And now we'll change this one to make greater than. And we want the token type of greater than, except when there's an equals afterwards, we want greater than or equals. 
So that's it for the changes to the Lexer, but before we move on to the Parser, we just need to add this new expected car error. Uh, so the title of the error is expected character, along with the details. So we're going to update the grammar rules of our language and then we can update the parser. So we'll start with our new comparison expression. So this will have the left hand side, then a comparison operator and then the right hand side. So if we compare two expressions such as 5 plus 5 uh, with 2 plus 8, we want it to be as if parentheses are around the plus operator rather than around uh, the comparison operator. So this means our comparison expression has to take less priority than this expression. If we have a var assignment to a comparison operation, uh, we want it to be as if the parentheses are around the comparison operation uh, rather than around the variable assignment. So this means our comparison expression has to take more priority than uh, the variable assignment. So if it has to take more priority than our variable assignment, but less priority than uh, this expression, then we have to put it in between those two rules. So what we'll do is we'll move this rule into a new arithmetic expression rule. And then in the expression, we can add in a new rule, uh, which looks for the comparison expression. So our comparison expression is going to be an arithmetic expression on the left hand side, an arithmetic expression on the right hand side, and then in between we'll have zero or more comparison operators. So double equals, less than, greater than, less than or equals, and greater than or equals. So next is the AND and OR logical operations. So if we take a look at this example, we want it to be as if our parentheses are around uh, the comparison operation, rather than the parentheses being around the AND operation. So this means that our logical operation expression has to take less priority than uh, our comparison expression. So if it's taking less priority than our comparison expression, then we have to put it above that. So we need to move this uh, comparison expression into a new rule. We'll call that comparison expression. And then we'll add in the logical operation expression rule here. So we'll have the comparison expression on the left hand and right hand side. And then we can have the AND or OR keywords. And then finally we have to add in the NOT operator, which can appear before a comparison expression. So what we'll do is we'll add a new rule before the comparison expression, which is NOT, and then another comparison expression. So this will recursively go back to a comparison expression every time we type in NOT. So that means we can put in as many NOTs as we want until we decide to put in a normal comparison expression. So we'll update the parser now to match our new grammar rules. So the first one we'll start with is the expression method. So if we scroll down to the end of the method, we were previously looking for a binary operation of a term, plus or minus, and then another term. But now what we want to do is look for a comparison expression, uh, followed by either the keyword AND or OR, and then another comparison expression. So we can still use this binary operation method from before, but we'll have to change this to a comparison expression. And then for the operators, we want a token type of keyword, and then the value of either AND or OR. Now currently our binary operation method doesn't allow us to specify a token value so we will have to update that in a moment. But we'll change this to look for a keyword with the value of AND or another keyword with the value of OR. So if you come down to the binary operation method you can just add this quick fix to the while condition to allow for values. Uh, it's not particularly fast but it will do for now. So next we have to add in the comparison expression so we'll create a method for that. We'll start off with creating a new parse result and we'll begin by looking for this rule so we'll check if the current token is a not keyword. So if self.currentToken.matches token type keyword with the value of not. We'll just assign the current token to a variable because we're going to need it in a second and then we can advance. So we need to call result.registeradvancement and then we can advance. So after the not keyword, we just need an entirely new comparison expression. So we'll call comparison expression and we'll save it into a node variable and we need to wrap this in result.register. And as usual, we'll check if there's an error. But otherwise, we can return a successful node and we'll use our unary operation node from before. We can then pass in the operator token, which will be the not operator, and then we can pass in the node. However, if we don't come across a not, then we know we are looking for the second part of this rule. 
So we'll create a variable called node, we'll call result.register and then we can use our binary operation method from before. So this time our method is going to be arithmetic expression, so we'll put that in. Self.arithmetic expression. And then for the token types we have double equals, not equals, less than, greater than, uh, less than equals and greater than equals. We'll check if there is an error. So like in the last episode, we have to overwrite this error message to include the not keyword. And if we take a look at the comparison expression, always called arithmetic expression, uh, which calls term, uh, which then calls factor, which then calls power, which then calls atom. And so we need to just copy the error message inside the atom function. So if you scroll up to the atom function, we can just copy this error message. And we'll come back down to the comparison expression and we'll paste it in here. And then we'll go ahead and include not at the end of this error message. So finally then we need to add in our arithmetic expression, which is just a binary operation, a uh, term plus minus and then another term. So we'll define that method and we can just return self.binary operation, self.term and then token type plus and token type minus. So the final thing we have to do now is update the interpreter. So we're going to have to update the visit binary operation node method and the visit unary operation node method. So for the binary operation node method, we need to add in all our new uh, logical operators and comparison operators. So I'm just going to paste in this big chunk. So what I've done is I've added in the check for all the different new token types. So our double equals, not equals, less than, etc. And then our and keyword and or keyword. And then I've called the appropriate methods, which we're going to have to define in just a second. So the equals, the double equals is going to call the equal comparison. The not equals is going to call the not equal comparison, etc. And for the and and or logical operations, it just calls anded by and ord by. So if we head over to the number class, I've just added in all these methods and this will take years to type out, so I'm not going to do that in this video. But we'll just take a look at one of the comparison methods for example, so this equals comparison uh, returns a new number, uh, it will do an equals comparison on self.value and other.value, and that Python operator will just return either true or false, and since in our language we've decided that false will be 0 and true will be 1, uh, we can just call the Python int method, and that will convert our boolean into the, either the numbers 0 or 1. So the same thing applies for the rest of the comparisons. And the same thing also applies for AND and OR, we just call the Python AND and OR operators. So then we have to update our visit unary operation node method, so I'll just paste in this new check uh, for the NOT keyword, and this will call the NOTED method on the number. So I've also added this NOTED method to uh, the number class. So if the value is false, so 0, then it will return true, which is a 1. Uh, but if the value is true, then it will return false, which is 0. So just a quick error we have to fix before we run the program. I accidentally on line 494 put in keyword instead of token type keyword. So just make sure you put that in correctly. And another thing I forgot to do is inside the comparison expression method, I forgot to return a result.success when there's a success. So just add that in. So if you run the program now, it should all work fine. So if you say 5 equals 5, that returns true. 6 equals 4, that should be false. We can put in more complicated expressions. We can also use the AND operator, so 1 equals 1 AND, 2 equals 2. And we can also use other comparisons such as 5 less than 6. So we'll end this video by just adding two new built-in variables to the language and those will be true and false. So we'll just duplicate this line twice and we'll add in true, which is going to be the number 1, and then false, which is going to be the number 0. And then we're also going to rename null to be all caps, which I meant to do in the previous video. So if we rerun the program now, we can use null, true, and false. Alright, so that's going to be it for this episode. So in the next episode, we're going to be adding in the if statement. And in the following episodes, we'll be adding in other statements, such as while statements and for statements. And then after that, we'll be moving on to functions. So thanks very much for watching, if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like button below, that will help me out. Uh, and if you have any questions or problems, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment below and I will try to uh, respond to you as soon as possible. Uh, and so I'll see you in the next episode.